Welcome back to Real Estate Mindset. Today's video is going to be absolutely bonkers. Now, the data is in and things have never been so unaffordable. And the interesting thing is, is just one year ago, it seemed like money was raining from the sky, which ultimately led to 40 year high runaway inflation with an inability of the Federal Reserve to step in and start quantitative easing. So the question is, will all of that lead to a foreclosure crisis? And if so, when will that foreclosure crisis happen? And that's what we're going to explore today, y'all. Obviously, Black Knight's new August report has come out for non-currents and delinquencies and things of that nature. So we're going to jump into that report from Black Knight titled Black Knight's First Look at August 2022 Mortgage Data. And you guys, I'm really starting to learn a lot more about the foreclosure process right now as it's compared to the foreclosure process in 2008. So I have noticed a lot of differences in this market and we're going to explore that today now you guys remember i'm not your financial advisor this is my personal youtube channel even though my bio is as a concerned american protective father husband who loves his wife an expert in hiding go seek and you guys for those expertise please like this video subscribe if you haven't and hit me up with a comment below and let me know what value you get from today's video let's get started unpacking this report right now all right guys and here's where i want to start it gives us some bullet points here that i think are pretty important to really understanding you know the difference in what foreclosure crisis is to come versus what was going on in 2008 so we're going to do a really good comparison today with today's video guys but here's the bullet points okay well first of all on the top here's what it says mortgage delinquencies near record low in august foreclosure starts are up 15% from July, still more than 40% below pre-pandemic levels. So you guys, here's the thing. This data actually, this, this data is actually, you know, just from looking at this data, it doesn't show that we're in a foreclosure crisis. Let me continue to read. The national delinquency rate fell 3.6% in August to 2.79%, just four basis points above May 2022's record low. Improvement was broad based with the number of borrowers a single payment pass due falling by 4% and those 90 days or more days delinquent down 4.5%. After dropping steadily over recent months, your activity also improved in August with 62,000 serious delinquent loans curing to current status up 58,000 in July. And that is big news to me, guys. This is a huge indication that our foreclosure process right now is way different than the past. Let's continue. The months 20.3 thousand foreclosure starts represent a 15% jump in activity from July, but remain 44% below August 2019 level. Likewise, starts were initiated on 3.4% of serious delinquencies, up slightly from July, but still less than half the rate we've seen in the years leading up to the pandemic. Now, here's the thing, you guys, the data is all over the place. And at first I was trying to figure out how is this data changing? And the thing is, guys, it's showing us that loan modifications are working. The fact that they took 62,000 families that were over 90 days late and caught them up is a sign that lenders really do, uh, you know, according to this, really do want to keep families in their homes. So when I'm reading this, this is actually refreshing data because we don't want families being kicked out of their house, being thrown out on the street. A foreclosure is an absolute nightmare. I know that because I went through it myself. So when I'm reading this, you guys, this is really music to my ears because again, I don't, we don't want inventory from people that are underwater and people that are suffering. But here's the thing. Let's continue to unpack this data because not everything is what it seems. Let's get back and review the chart right now. All right, y'all, you may be getting more and more familiar with this chart. This is Black Knight's basically data reporting chart that tells us foreclosures, delinquencies, late pays, and things of that nature. So I want to start at the top here where it says total U.S. delinquencies. Now, here's the thing, you guys, you know, the delinquency rate is actually down month over month to 3.6%. I don't know how it's down because things are getting more expensive. So I actually expect this to go up 
But the reality is it's going down, which is really, really astonishing to me. Now, pre-foreclosure inventory, it didn't really do anything. It's kind of balanced. Now, here's, you know, here's some of the bad stuff that actually went up, which is total foreclosure, which is foreclosure starts. Foreclosure starts actually is up 14.69% month over month and 185% year over year. We really don't look at year over year, guys, because obviously last year there was a foreclosure ban. So this column right here is not really relevant as far as painting a picture of what's happening right now. However, month to month foreclosure starts are actually up 15%. Now I could see this continuing to go up, but I'm, you know, again, I'm really surprised at the resiliency of families. And again, I also think that shows that people are well qualified versus 2008. Now, the other really bad thing that went up y'all is the foreclosure sales. So the foreclosure sales is actually up 1.83% month over month and 173% year over year. But here's, what's really, really interesting. You guys, the number of properties that are actually delinquent 1.489 million. This is 30 days or more past due. This is actually low historically. And the really interesting things is, is month over month is actually down 54,000. This is actually showing delinquencies going down, which is astonishing to me. But here's the really important thing to keep your eyes on. It's the number of properties that are 90 days or more past due. These are the people, 567,000 people are, that are knocking on the door of foreclosure. So these are the people at the biggest risk. Now look at this, it's actually down month over month of 27,000. So that's actually a good thing. And this is, you know, this is the group of people right here that it's most important to get caught up and to cure their loan. So obviously, like it said in August, 62,000 of these people were brought current. So it's showing loan modification is actually working. Now this number right here, you know, it, this may look low, but that's actually a super high number. This is actually higher than it was in the beginning of 2007. And I'll show you guys that here in a second. Now also what we wanna pay attention to is the total number of properties in non-current status. So right now there's 1.67 million people in non-current status. So what I wanna do is I wanna compare this number right here and the serious delinquencies to what was going on in 2007, just to give us basically a better idea of what this chart means. Because honestly, just looking at that chart, it doesn't appear that we're in a foreclosure problem. So I really want to compare what is happening right now to what happened in the past. So take a look at this. All right, so here's where I want to start. So remember right now we're under 1.6 million. So this row right here represents January of 2007 or right before we went into one of the biggest housing market crashes in our history, okay? So what I first want you to notice is this column here, which is the 90 days plus past due. Now, as you can see, you guys, this is, this is actually lower than where we're at right now. So we have a higher number of serious delinquencies than we did right before we went into a total market collapse. Now look at how much this number spiked in one year to 950 and then in another year to 1.8 million. So the thing is a serious delinquencies can spiral out of control very quickly. But another thing I wanna point out is the non-current payment status. We are so low right now with non-current payment status at under 1.7 million. Look at it guys, it was at 2.8 million non-current homes right before we went into the last, you know, last disaster. So again, you know, this is telling me that we're actually way better off than we were in 2007, but take a look at this next chart. Now, here's one reason why I think we're in better shape, guys. Now, again, this rose 2007 and I highlighted this column. This is the average days delinquent for foreclosure. So what I want you guys to pay attention to is in 2007, the average days to foreclosure was 267. Fast forward to today, the average days in, in foreclosure is 1,213 days. Pre-pandemic, it was actually 838 days. So what does that tell us exactly? It tells us that people are behind on their mortgage payment way longer, almost triple the amount of time that they were in 2007. So it's going to be very interesting as the foreclosure problem gets worse and worse to see how these lenders can handle a potential bottleneck of serious delinquent loans. So it's going to be really interesting to see that guys. But as you can see here, it appears loan modification is helping 
substantially and it also appears so far that the loans these days are are the bar the borrowers and the loans these days are much better off than they were in 2007 so i definitely believe there's going to be a foreclosure crisis but it's really important to understand that things are actually way different right now than they were in 2007. Having said that, let's jump into the top states in serious delinquency status to see if we had any changes from last month. Take a look. All right, guys, so the first section and the last section down here represent non-current percentage, and the bottom is serious delinquency percentage. And the reason I have this middle one here, this is the bottom five states, but let's go to the top five states of non-current. It's Mississippi, Louisiana, Oklahoma, Alabama, and West Virginia. But what I find interesting is it actually swaps two states when we talk about serious delinquency. So Oklahoma and West Virginia are actually not in this row, but it is filled by Alaska and Arkansas. So just because Alaska and Arkansas aren't here, but I also want to point out the bottom five states, which is Oregon, California, Colorado, Idaho, and Washington. And what I noticed is, is these are all West Coast states that in my mind are severely overvalued. So I'm wondering why would these states be on the bottom five being that they're so overvalued. And I believe the reason that is, is I believe that those states are continuing to ban foreclosure and evictions and continuing to pass the buck. And that's what I believe we're seeing there because those are, you know, those are states that are actually super expensive to live in. So it didn't make sense to me at first, except if those states are banning foreclosure. Now, overall, there's three things that I want to conclude on with this video that I hope you guys saw yourself. Now, the first thing is loan modifications are showing and proving that they are highly effective at keeping distressed borrowers in their homes. And in my opinion, that's a good thing because we don't want people going into foreclosures. We don't want families in the street. So number one, loan modifications appear to be softening any potential foreclosure crisis. Number two, loans right now have, have much better qualified buyers than they did in 2002 to 2008. And I believe as a result of that, that's why we're seeing so many less people in non current status. Now, number three, I believe that the foreclosure crisis is slow because we reset foreclosures in 2022. It's almost like we started from zero because we came out of the ban. So those are the three primary reasons that I believe that foreclosures aren't spiraling out of control. Plus, obviously, also people can just sell their house because of massive equity growth. Now, overall, I think the foreclosure crisis is actually going to happen towards the end of 2023. I initially said the beginning of 2023, but the more I thought about it and marinated on loan modification and loans and this data, it has me thinking that it's going to be a slow play. It's going to be a slow rollout of foreclosure. So I believe it's going to happen towards the end of 2023. And I believe it's going to continue possibly into 2025. Now do me a favor, you guys comment below. Let me know what value you got from today's video. And if you're out there investing in real estate, you know, I wish you luck and I hope you win.